Hi guys, uh, welcome to our new video. Uh, I understand that it has been a very long time, uh, almost more than one and a half months since uh, my last video came out. Uh, I have been busy in a number of uh, new things. Uh, so apologies for such a long delay. And I am sure that uh, from now on, there will be regular videos every week on LTE and on 5G. And uh, I hope uh, you missed uh, my videos and do uh, leave your comments in the comment section. Today our topic is again uh, LT optimization and a particular topic that uh, I have chosen today is PCI that is your physical cell identity. PCI is a very important part uh, in LTE uh, in terms of uh, retainability and accessibility uh, KPIs and today we will see that what actually PCI is, uh, what are the strategies of PCI planning, how PCI can affect your uh, KPIs and what we can do to uh, avoid any issues with PCI. So let's begin with the definition of PCI. So PCI basically consists of two elements that is your PSS plus your SSS. Now PSS is your primary synchronization uh, signal and SSS is your secondary synchronization signal. So what happens is basically this PSS is donated by uh, 0, 1, 2 and this SS is donated by 0 to any number between 1, 6, 7. And what it does is that this is plus and this is 3. So basically zero either uh, for any particular PCI for your primary synchronization signal we choose a number from 0 1 2 any one number from 0 1 2 and then for your secondary synchronization signal we choose any number between 0 to 1 6 7 and then multiply it with 3. The sum of these two figures gives, gives you your PCI. So in actual terms, your PCI can be any value between 0 to 503 and there are a total of 504 PCIs, physical cell IDs in LTE. So uh, if you have, if you are planning any uh, LTE network and it has thousands of uh, sectors cells, you will have to reuse your PCI. So you will have to re reuse your 504 PCIs all over your entire network and this is where uh, a situation can occur where some of your sectors who are adjacent to each other or even they are located in the same cell might end up having the same PCI and that will cause you severe network issues. So next uh, term is your PCI strategy. What should you be looking in terms of uh, PCI that can cause you issues? So in that part, what we can see is, uh, number one thing is same PCI. Then you have your PCI mod 3 and your PCI mod 30. So the first uh, strategy uh, is basically to avoid uh, the same PCI being on adjacent cells. So like this. So all the PCIs for each of these sectors should be different. And if you have a cell A so, and it has a neighbor cell B, and that cell B has a neighbor cell C. So all of these cells should have different PCIs. So we have a tire one where the neighbors should not have the same PCI. And then we have tire two where the neighbor of the neighbor should not have that PCI. Another strategy number two is PCI mod three. So what does PCI mod three means is that if you divide your PCI by three and the remainder is your PCI mod 3. So if your PCI is for example 26 and you divide it by 3 so your remainder will be 2. So you need to check that if your sectors 
which are adjacent to each other which are look, looking at the same uh, location or they are in the same site should not have the same value of PCI mod 3. This is very important uh, for your MIMO networks uh, wherever you are using 2x2, 4x4 or any sort of MIMO and also for your very dense uh, networks for example in your CBD where there might be a number of uh, PCIs available for your cell to camp on and then number three is your PCI mod 30. Uh, PCI mod 30 is uh, actually to avoid uh, problems in your uplink because there are 30 uh, PCI sequences uh, which are kept for uh, uplink uh, uh, stuff so if you have your uh, same cells having uh, adjacent sectors or sectors looking at each other having the same PSM or 30 uh, value then you might have issues in uplink. So as a recap the KPIs that might be affected because of these same PCIs are uh, retainability that is your drop call ratio and your drop call ratio will be affected because of handover issues because of PCI and the th other thing is your accessibility because if you have PCI confusion uh, while the cell is accessing the network then uh, it might happen that your cell has given a RATCH request the resources have been uh, acquired but your RRC connection setup or your RRC connection reconfiguration has gone to a PCI which is actually not your cell so that is where the KPIs can be affected after this uh, we may uh, see uh, what is the PCI assignment strategy? So there are two assignment strategies basically The first is that you give one PSS to a site and then you revolve around the SSS. So basically your PSS is between 0 1 and 2 and your SSS is any number between 0 and 1 6 7 so the first strategy is that you give 0 here, 0 here and 0 here. So you have all your sectors have the same PSS and you give different SSS. So you give this 28, you give this 63, you give this 71. And then you can calculate your PCI according to that. The second strategy is that you give the same SSS. For example, you give this 28, this is 28, give this 28 and you circulate the PSS. So you give this one 0, this give 1 and this 2. So the question comes that what is the difference between these two strategies? The first strategy actually removes all interference from the resource elements, uh, all interference coming from PCI collisions. Uh, all interference from the resource elements which are used for traffic channels and the second strategy where you are basically using the same SSS and different PSS removes all the interference from the re reference signal resource elements so this one gives you clean reference signals this one gives you clean RE for traffic so the, st the recommended strategy is this one because if you have PCI interference on your reference signal then your channel estimation and your uh, channel reporting and your access procedures will be seriously hampered because reference signal is used to estimate the channel and to uh, make any decisions in terms of handover etc etc. So this is your preferred strategy. Let's now move on to uh, the PCI groups what happens in the PCI groups. So in actual LTE network uh, what we do is basically is that we divide uh, the 504 uh, PCIs into four groups. And all of these four groups have 126 uh, PCIs in each of them. Uh, 120 of them are allocated to particular cells and the six are basically referred for any growth. For <coughs> example, if you are deploying your network 
with a set of 6000 sites so you will use 120 in one uh, area 120 in the other 120 in the other and 120 in the other and then you keep those six uh, PCIs for any expansion sites for any uh, addition in capacity or any addition in coverage for later usage then your PCI algo uh, now there are many tools for example uh, ATOL and X, uh, other planet and other tools which use P automatic PCI allocation and usually there is an algorithm behind that uh, PCI allocation and that algorithm usually works on minimizing uh, the uh, cell reference signal interference and also maximizing the PCI reuse distance. And there's a question often asked that what is the reuse distance? So usually in um, a radio environment, the distance is measured in uh, terms of path loss. So the strategy is that if you have a neighbor whose uh, RSRP is better than 10 dBs, uh, is like within a range of 10 dBs from your server, then the PCI should be different. And same for the tire too, that the neighbor of that neighbor, if that level is below, uh, is better in the window of 10 dB, then the PCI should be different. So 10 dB is basically a benchmark. So if the level is poorer than 10 dB for the neighbor, uh, doesn't matter because that will not interfere in terms of PCI confusion and PCI collision. And in the last, uh, we will discuss that what is PCI collision and what is PCI confusion? So collision happens uh, at the time of accessibility and it affects your accessibility KPIs, for example, your call setup success rate, your RAT success rate. What happens is that, <clears throat> for example, you have a mobile, it tries to access a particular cell, it gives a RAT request, it tries to establish an RRC connection, it has provided some resources but there's a neighbor cell with the same PCI. So the RRC configuration uh, setup or RRC configuration reconfiguration setup can be sent to the cell, which is actually not your particular cell. It might go to a different cell. And therefore your mobile will never receive that acceptance of the resources and therefore uh, it will be packed as an accessibility failure. This is called a PCI collision. Then this is called PCI confusion and in PCI confusion usually happens in terms of handovers that the target cell has been given a command that your mobile is actually sent a command for uh, to camp on a particular cell and what happens is that it uses that PCI and tries to attempt to hand over to a cell which is actually not the target cell it is a cell very far away with having the same PCI and that will actually result in a handover drop. So these are the few uh, topics uh, around PCI that uh, I wanted to discuss with you and I hope it will help you in uh, optimizing your LTE networks and in understanding uh, the importance of physical cell ID in an LTE network. I hope to see you soon uh, regularly now and see you soon in my next video. Please leave your comments uh, in the comment section and do tell me if you want to have a particular video. Thank you.